Hey all you trig students out there. In this video we will go over some concepts relating to uh, how we can determine the trig ratios of an angle when the terminal arm is defined by a point that's not on the unit circle. So first thing is uh, I want you to recall that the x and y coordinates of a point on a unit circle uh, will tell us the cosine and sine ratios of the angle uh, that's created by the positive x-axis and the terminal arm uh, passing through that point, right? So I'm just going to take a little little trip around the unit circle here and note that the point there again will give us the x-coordinate which is the cosine of the angle and the y-coordinate which is the sine of the angle. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just go outside of the unit circle here and I'll just uh, zoom out in a moment here. So what I have is I've got a terminal arm that's defined by the fact that it goes through uh, 3, 3. Okay, um, now obviously 3, 3 is outside of the unit circle. Uh, please, if I ask you what the cosine and sine of um, this angle is, please don't tell me the cosine is 3 and the sine is 3. Right, that just wouldn't make sense. Um, the cosine and sine of this angle is the same as it was uh, for the unit circle, which is 0.707 comma 0 0.707, right? This terminal arm not only passes through 3, 3, but it also passes through the unit circle. Now, when you encounter a problem like this, I won't give you the unit circle, right? You, you won't know where the unit circle is relative to this. You won't know what the coordinates are where this terminal arm passes through the or intersects with the unit circle. You'll just know that it passes through 3, 3, okay? So let me, let me do this, and what we want to do is be able to figure out what the primary and also reciprocal ratios are of this angle. Okay, without the benefit of the unit circle. So one thing that you should notice right away is that you could do the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Right? So first thing is you would want to figure out the hypotenuse of this length right here, right? which you can easily determine by going to your calculator and taking 3 squared plus 3 squared, add those together, and then square root and you end up with 4.24. I'm going to store that on my calculator in X, right? So if I clear this and I hit X, I'll always be able to retrieve that number. So that's the hypotenuse. That's the length of this blue line here. If you want the if you want the sine of this angle, you can take the opposite side of this triangle divided by the hypotenuse. Well, the opposite side is 3 divided by the hypotenuse, which is stored in X, and I get 0 0.707. Right. Um, the other thing that you might notice also is that this triangle contained within the unit circle, okay, is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, okay. And this triangle out here, the bigger triangle, is also a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So this is what mathematicians call similar triangles, right? They're proportional to each other. One's obviously bigger than the other one, but they both have two angles that are 45, a third angle that is 90 and their heights are proportional to each other. So um, if I take the large height and divide by a certain factor to get the small height, then, I then it would be by that same factor that the two base lengths are related to each other. Okay, and it would be by the same factor that the two hypotenuses are related to each other. Okay, let's take a look now at a relatively easy example here. So if I were to go and move this, let's say, to 4. I just went a little bit over. So um, I've got a base length of 4, a height of 3. Uh, I don't need my calculator for this because I know this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So consider, if you will, what the cosine of this ratio would be. It would be uh, the cosine of this angle would be. Okay, It would be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, Okay, which would be 4 divided by 5, which is 0.8. And the sine of this angle would be the opposite side, 3 divided by the hypotenuse, 5. 3 divided by 5 is 0.6. Okay, so you don't really need the unit circle if you know these dimensions. And if you don't know the hypotenuse, you can figure that out first. Okay, let's move over to, say, the third, or sorry, the second quadrant. Okay, and let's make it uh, somewhat obscure. So I'll go negative 1.5, and then maybe positive 1.7. Okay, so we have the benefit of knowing what the answer is going to be. Let me just move this over here. Um, let me take my calculator out and see how I would figure this out. So the question would be put to you this way. Without any reference to the unit circle, it would say a terminal arm passes through the point negative 1.5 comma 1.7. Um, what, what are the sine, cosine, and tan ratios 
of the angle that is created between the positive x-axis and the terminal arm, which is really referring to this obtuse angle right here. Okay, so how we would do this is, first of all, I would want to figure out what the hypotenuse length is. So again, with my calculator, I would take negative 1.5 squared uh, plus 1.7 squared equals, and then I would square root. Okay, so there's my hypotenuse length. So apparently the length of this blue line segment is 2.27 rounded. I will store this in x. And I can now figure out the cosine, sine, and tan. So the cosine would be negative 1.5 because I'm to the left of the y-axis. And I would divide that by x, and that would give me my negative 0.662 cosine, which is correct according to the unit circle. And then the sine would be the height 1.7 divided by the hypotenuse x, and that would give me 0.75 approximately. And then the tan, of course, is the y or the opposite side over the x or the adjacent side. And so that would simply be 1.7 divided by negative 1.5. And the answer there would be negative 1.13 repeating. You can also get the reciprocal trig ratios by simply reciprocating uh, each of those uh, answers that we got for the primary trig ratios. Now there's one last example that I would show you before I run out of time here. And for this one, I'm going to pick very specific uh, values for the point that the terminal arm passes through. So let's go to maybe quadrant three, might as well. And so I'm going to pick uh, negative 0.61 and uh, negative point six eight. Okay. And what I wanted to show you here, okay, I'll just zoom in here, is that the terminal arm passes through a point that is uh, not on the unit circle, but within the unit circle. And so at first blush, when you take a look at these coordinates, you may think that those are coordinates on the unit circle. Okay. But I won't tell you that they are. Like if they're not, I'm not going to lie to you and say they're on. Right. But when, when students look at decimals, they'll think, oh, okay, like, they're on the, it's on the unit circle, but it isn't, right? If you actually uh, put this x coordinate and this y coordinate into the equation of the unit circle, um, you, you, it won't actually satisfy that equation, right? Because obviously this point is not on the unit circle. So here's my point. Um, in order to determine the sine, cosine, tan, and all of the other ratios of this angle, okay, you would have to follow the same procedure that we've been following. right? So first thing you would do is figure out the Pyth by Pythagorean theorem the length of this hypotenuse. And then you can figure out sine by going opposite, negative 0.68, divided by the length of the hypotenuse. Cosine would be the base length of this triangle, negative 0.61, divided by the hypotenuse, etc. Okay, so please don't automatically assume, oh, cosine must be negative 0.61, sine must be negative 0.68, and go with that. The, the true cosine and sine ratios of this angle are listed here. If I were to extend this terminal arm, it would intersect the unit circle at that point. Okay, so that's just one misconception that I that I wanted to point out to make sure that you don't uh, fall prey to that. Okay, and that's the end of this video.